These are metabolic derangements in end-stage kidney disease, as well as some proposed mechanisms. Let's start with calcium. In end-stage kidney disease, you have decreased calcitriol production, which leads to decreased calcium absorption. You also have increased phosphorus, which leads to calcium complexing, which further decreases your free calcium ions. Both of these result in hypocalcemia. In potassium, you have impaired renal excretion of potassium, leading to increased serum potassium. This is one of the main reasons you get dialysis, because increasing serum potassium can lead to cardiac problems. You also have a metabolic acidosis and protein catabolism, which can further lead to hyperkalemia. Phosphorus, in kidney dysfunction, you have decreased phosphorus excretion. The decreased calcitriol also results in increased parathyroid hormone, which can lead to more bone phosphorus mobilization. All of these contribute to hyperphosphatemia. You have acid-base irregularities. You have reduced organic anion excretion, leading to an expanded anion gap. You have kidney dysfunction that can lead to metabolic acidosis. Your sodium is relatively stable in end-stage kidney disease. Albumin tends to be decreased because you're in an inflammatory state, and your BUN and creatinine are markedly increased. Your osmolality can be potentially increased if your dialysis is irregular.